Okay then. Alien Resurrection is the fourth Alien movie released in 1997, directed by Jean-Pierre Junet, who would later go on to do Amelie, and once again brings back Sigourney Weaver. The movie takes place 200 years after the events of Alien 3, where Ripley basically sacrificed her life in order to ensure the extinction of the Xenomorphs. So cut to 200 years later, where she's been cloned, and the queen that she had inside of her in Alien 3 has been removed and has turned into a new alien queen. How they were actually able to get Ripley's DNA is never really mentioned, ever. So... Eventually, you know what's going to happen. Uh, the scientists start breeding more aliens, and before you know it, they're running loose, killing people, and it's up to Ripley and a bunch of space pirates to escape this ship. Uh, why are there space pirates on board? Well, because they were the ones responsible for bringing the humans to have the aliens breed off of. Oops. So whenever Alien Resurrection gets brought up in a conversation, people usually shun it as being the worst Alien movie of the bunch. So much so that there's actually a DVD box set out there, not Blu-ray, just DVD, uh, that includes all the Alien movies except Resurrection, just the first three. So those are clear signs that this could be a piece of shit. Uh, but is it worse than Alien 3? Well, while it is a piece of shit, uh, that's actually a topic I'm going to get to near the end of the video, but let's talk about Alien Resurrection itself. Like Alien 3, I saw this like some time after seeing the previous movie, and I didn't like it at all. So re-watching it, it's still just as bad. Like with Alien 3, my opinion still stays the same. And the one thing that really kills me watching this movie again, now that I actually have more of a knowledge with film, is that it's written by Joss Whedon. He's one of my favorite people working in the industry, and he's the guy who's responsible for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Firefly, Dollhouse, Dr. Horrible Singalong, and The Avengers, and he's also supposed to do a Batgirl movie for the DC Extended Universe, which... I gotta say, as much as I'm not a fan of the DC Extended Universe, I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, he wrote this movie solely by himself, and it's just so stupid. It is a stupid, stupid script. The setup of the movie has so many plot holes that it's amazing that they got away with it. But I wonder if the script was all his doing, or if the studio came in and just kind of tinkered with it and messed with it, just like they did with the entirety of Alien 3. Uh, because, again, these two movies are famous uh, for Fox stepping in and just kind of screwing him over. And getting back to the setup of the movie, I can point out two big plot holes uh, that just make you go, why? How did you not think of this? One, how did they get Ripley's DNA? Last time we saw Ellen Ripley, she threw herself into a burning furnace 200 years ago. There would be no trace of her DNA left anywhere in a burning fucking furnace. And plus, even if there was, why would they keep it around for 200 years? But let's kind of go past that and move on to the second plot hole. The alien inside of her. Okay, so let's say they do come up with a reason how they got Ripley's DNA. Huh? There's no way they would be able to clone the alien queen that was living inside of her. Huh? That is a completely different entity from Ripley herself. We really expect a conversation once this cloning process was commissioned to go something like this. We need to clone Ellen Ripley to get the alien out of her stomach. But... Wouldn't that just clone Ellen Ripley? We wouldn't get any alien. Shut up, I'm paying this huge amount of money to make this a success. Then cut to 200 years later. All right, we've made the perfect clone of Ellen Ripley. Let's cut her open and get that alien queen out of her. Wait. Wait, where's the queen? I told you if we cloned Ripley, there'd be no alien inside of her. Because why would there be? I mean, that is something that you really expect to see out of a How It Should Have Ended skit, which I should say, if somebody from How It Should Have Ended is watching this, and you at one point decide, you know what, let's do How Alien Resurrection Should Have Ended, I give you that for free. Uh, that one's on me. Uh, take it, do with it what you will. 
So yeah, there are two big plot holes just in the setup of the movie. But let's just go past the story. How are the characters in this movie? Really? Not that interesting. They just range from either boring to fucking stupid. Uh, a lot of these characters are just not interesting and they do really stupid things like take one company employee who's clearly been impregnated and figure, yeah, let's keep him around. And then later on when it's like, oh shit, the alien's coming out of his chest, let's kill him. It's like, Guys, you should have killed him beforehand. You get pregnated by a xenomorph, you're dead. You might as well just commit suicide. There are only two characters that really stick out to me as being close to interesting. And believe it or not, one of them is not Ellen Ripley. Sigourney Weaver is back in this movie as Ellen Ripley. And she... This is the first alien movie where Ripley is so uninteresting. Now, to be totally fair... This is not the same Ripley from the past three movies. This is a clone, and Sigourney Weaver does the best she possibly can with this crappy material, but it just makes her kind of dull. The one character trait they try to give her to make her different is that she incorporated some DNA from the xenomorphs, like more animalistic senses and acid blood, but they don't really take full advantage of it. Uh, it's just... I don't know why it's there, honestly. So, Ripley's just a bore. The other main actress in this movie is Winona Ryder, who plays one of the members of the Space Pirates, who is later revealed to be an android. And it's supposed to come out as a twist, but it's not really that surprising. Nothing really built up to her being an android. She wasn't that interesting to begin with. And plus, we've already seen androids in the Alien universe. They're not that special, so it's just like... Oh, she's an android. Uh, big fucking deal. And also, Winona Ryder just feels completely out of place. She reminds me of Katie Holmes in Batman Begins or Kate Bosworth in Superman Returns, uh, where she's technically not doing a bad job, but she looks like she's 12 years old. It looks like she has no reason to be with a group of space pirates. It just, I don't know. Not good casting there. Now, getting back to the two characters that are actually close to being interesting, and this will eventually lead into another problem with the movie. Uh, the first character is played by Ron Perlman, who's one of the space pirates, uh, and the only reason why he's somewhat memorable is because he's Ron Perlman. But also, there's one scene in this movie when they're trying to escape the xenomorphs, and he comes across a spider web hanging out in the ship, how a spider managed to get on a ship in deep space, I don't know. But anyway, he gets scared, and then he takes his gun and shoots it away. <laughs> okay. Um, the first time I ever saw that scene, I was just like, what the fuck just happened? You just shoot a spider with a gun? It's just one of those things where you look at it and it's so unintentionally funny, and it comes so out of nowhere that... It, you're really not quite sure how to take it. The other interesting character in this movie is played by Brad Dourif, who is one of the scientists, and... Huh. How exactly do I explain Brad Dourif in this movie? I think the best scene that can describe his character is when he's taking care of this one alien in a cage, uh, and the alien's looking at him through the glass and is just doing its classic, like, snarls. And then Brad Dourif decides to push his face up towards the glass also and do this. And you're just like, what the fuck am I watching right now? And this leads into one of the big problems in the movie. It is unintentionally funny in many places. Like, it is very tongue-in-cheek in terms of funny, which I don't think is a really good thing. I mean, the only really thing that it contributes is that it makes itself distant from the past Alien movies, which... I guess I could commend them for, but you just really can't take it all that seriously. Whether it's the characters doing really exaggerated and out there things, or the really bizarre and over-the-top camera work, it is just a weird, 
weird fucking movie, but not in a good way at all. This movie also makes the big crime of breaking continuity with not only the past movies, but things it sets up within its own movie. One scene, for example, is when the Ripley clone gets hugged by a face hugger, and you know when a face hugger latches onto you, it's not gonna come off. Even if you try to cut it off, it's gonna squeeze tighter. So the only thing you can do is just wait till it drops dead. But when Ellen Ripley gets a face hugger on her face, she just manages to tear it off like it's no big deal. So she's not impregnated. She just manages to tear it off like it's nothing. And then the continuity error within its own movie is that they introduce a character, one of the space pirates, who's one one character defining trait, I guess, uh, is that he's an expert with firearms. He can shoot anywhere without missing his target. Uh, even shoot like something on the ceiling, making the bullet bounce off to hit the target. Uh, and then all of a sudden, when they're running from the xenomorphs, uh, he is at point blank range. Uh, and he's shooting the xenomorph and constantly misses. Uh, it's like, okay, when did this guy turn into a stormtrooper with his firing? Uh, like, he is just missing everywhere. He's like this close to the alien uh, with two guns. Uh, and the alien's just dodging it back and forth uh, really quickly with terrible CGI. Uh, it's a joke. Uh, it's just so stupid. It makes you go... Whoa, 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 wait a minute. It breaks continuity, and it also just introduces things that really come in too late. I mentioned the trait where Ellen Ripley has adapted some of the Xenomorph's DNA, like the acid blood, but the alien queen has also inherited some traits from Ellen Ripley, like developing a womb to give live birth to a true human-alien hybrid, which is really one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. This design is just so weird. I don't really know how to take it. It's just not, I don't know, it's not appealing at all. It doesn't really fit within the rest of the Alien series, to be honest. It looks like something from a completely different horror movie, and it just pops in at the last 10 minutes. This is something that really could have been cut out. Nobody would have missed it. It would have just been a very generic alien escape movie, and that newborn alien, as it's referred to as, uh, feels like a complete afterthought, so I don't know why it's in, in the movie, it contributes nothing. So I don't have much to say about Alien Resurrection. I guess I'll bring it back to which movie's worse, Alien 3 or Alien Resurrection. <sighs> to be honest, it's really, really hard to pick, because on one hand, Alien 3 pissed me off with how insulting the opening was and killing off the characters from Aliens. But it did have some things that I did like. I mean, Sigourney Weaver was better in that movie. It had some beautiful cinematography. And the dog-alien hybrid was a good idea. As for Alien Resurrection, there's nothing good about it. There's not a single thing that I can point out and say, yeah, that was good. But at the same time, it didn't make me angry. So... I guess if a movie doesn't make me angry, then it doesn't deserve the burn in hell rating. So, yeah, I guess, to be honest, I think Alien Resurrection is a better movie, but not by a whole lot. That's not saying much at all, because I still say don't waste your money on this movie. It's just so weird, bizarre, uninteresting. It also feels random. There's no real big climactic resolution at the end like there was with Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3. It just felt like an unnecessary sequel that just was there to make money. Which, I mean, granted, all movies are there to make money, but this one just really felt like it had no purpose. And to give you some sort of idea of how bad Alien Resurrection is, even though I like it a tad better than 3, I would rather watch Jason X again over this movie. The reason I bring up Jason X is because both movies are over-the-top science fiction horror movies. But the reason I prefer Jason X, because that movie spawned from a franchise that had no class to begin with. The Friday the 13th movies are never made for artistic integrity. Alien Resurrection, on the other hand, came from a franchise that started out with two cinematic classics, Alien and Aliens, and to see the series just stoop to that low, it's sad. So, yeah. 
not a fan of this movie. And that's my review for Alien Resurrection. Now, technically, the next movie in line would be Alien vs. Predator and its sequel, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. But I'm going to skip those movies, and I have two reasons why. The first reason is that I am not mentally ready to rewatch those movies. I may have shit on Alien 3 and Resurrection, but the AVP movies are absolute garbage. They make Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection look like Alien and Aliens by comparison. But the second reason is because I don't feel right talking about those movies unless I talked about the Predator movies. And since we have a new Predator movie coming out next year directed by Shane Black, that would be the perfect time to do not only the Predator movies, but the AVP series. So we're just going to jump ahead into Prometheus for next week. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you're thoughts are on the movie if and when you've seen it and as always this is the real mr robinson telling you there is only one